part of being an artist is to be able to record like right now, this very moment. And we look at artists that do that, and we think, wow, those are, those are artists with vision. But they're just awake, being awake to paint that. Um, I think your view of fruit stands, because especially in places like here, they are disappearing. Yeah. And you can imagine people who are our age now, that it had you painted these fruit stands just in this valley alone, one after another, as they disappeared, the collection of just Saratoga fruit stands, and you did a series of 12 or 15 or 24 of those. You can imagine even a big corporation like Apple would love to have a wall filled with paintings of that recording their area. Because a lot of them pay homage to the valley and the history of the valley. It does pay to kind of be awake to paint something. This was a really great observation. Driving by saying, oh, they didn't plant this this year. Something's up with that piece of property. So touche. You're, you're a good scout. That's like when I was driving down Burlingame and they had the big drive-in there at Burlingame. I drove by and I go, something's up with that property. Something's weird. And I went out there and painted it that day. The next day, they started tearing all that down. And so I had this, the screens with pieces of it falling and the big uh, uh, building where you buy the popcorn and things with the arches, those old 60s kind of cool things and stuff. And so nostalgia is awesome, you know? And I just looked at the painting yesterday and I go, God, if anything, I look back and, and it's a memory for me. You know, it's one of those paintings I just don't sell. It's part of my collection because I can never paint that again. Well, you know, one thing about marketing is if you can figure out what is going to be regenerated every 30 years, and you can figure out what that is. So it would be like people who had gone to the drive-in as little kids now would go there as nostalgia to bring their kids. Mm -hmm. So like every 30 years you have a repeat of something. And there was a twist, like Ford is coming out with a Bronco. It's about 30 years. And so now they're coming out with a Bronco next year. Cute car, it looks very similar to. Yeah, so, there's, so every 30 years they come back and I think Trans Am is gonna come back too. Um, so every 30 years you have that, because we need that for our society. Imagine if you were an artist awake back then, you'd be now in vogue. That's another thing, too. Carnivals, very few of them around. Circuses, and now imagine circuses with no elephants. Imagine if you were painting elephants at the circus and how they used to be kept and all this stuff. You could have a whole series of paintings. You just have to be awake. People are like, well, what am I going to paint? And I go, oh, there's paintings all around you. You just have to be awake. This morning I was staring into Darla's eyes. And she was like looking at me and I said, do you know how many people our age don't even know the color of their mother's eyes? Really? Yeah. We, we never bother to look. And the thing is, all of a sudden your parents are gone and you go, I don't even know what her eyes look like. I never took the time to, to look, really look into... So I was doing that to Dara, she thought it was... I said, I just want to know what the color of your eyes are. Yeah. It was like looking in a mirror. Is a painting worthy? Is a painting worthy? Is it a, is it, would it stand if people are not tuned into it because it doesn't have a central focal point? So, what is the central focal point in this painting? The courthouse sign. Yeah. And why is that? Because I made it lighter than the rest. It was brighter. Yeah, it's brighter and lighter. I wouldn't, I would argue with it necessarily because, because of that. But what else is it? Well, it's what it's about. It's, yeah. It explains it. What does it yeah. Worry. Yeah, it does. It, and it explains it. But the reason why it becomes a center focal point is because the brain always needs resolution. Yeah. You know, that's the thing with abstract art. To tell somebody don't look at it because it has no meaning is like telling the brain to stop thinking. And how can you do that? Because just in the thought of having somebody tell you to stop thinking, your brain says, why should I stop thinking? You know, so it's, it's this constant <coughs> conversation. When something comes up for, for whatever reason, the brain wants to figure it out. So immediately we look at this painting and then we immediately go to the things that are familiar. 
and words are very familiar. That's like looking at people's eyes. Um, it's like things that move catch our eyes. Remember, we're painting how the brain works. It's different than how we think we see. You know, the brain is actually what's causing us to see because it's constantly focusing and making opinions about things. That's why photography isn't the same as painting. As painting, we're, we're recreating human experience. Cameras can't do that. They don't have an, uh, an opinion about what they see. What? <laughs> Remember last week we talked about that? Yeah. Didn't we? Remember? <laughs> and you said, oh my God, why are you like picking on me for this? Didn't you no, know? I did not see that. <laughs> I did not. And Don was here when we did that. So this morning I, I said to Don, I said, so, he says, it's just this painting is just not going anywhere. I think you used that tone. I did. <laughs> I almost didn't come in. <laughs> yeah. So. I suck as an artist. Yeah. Uh, we all stink, think yeah. that So I said, well, you know, it's because of your your temperatures. And he's like, hmm? And I go, didn't you hear me last week with Gene? <laughs> you, you don't learn anything unless you're ready for it. You don't learn anything, you know. And a lot of people, a lot of people will sit and listen. You're responsible for the way I teach and what I've learned. I mean, you were one of the first people when we started doing our lecture series and I had the homework assignments. You were there. And I had you do those experiments. Yeah, so, so he goes back to the beginning of, of that philosophy. And yet, this morning, it was like, huh? Huh? <laughs> so it means that people are still wrestling with it. He's still wrestling with it. So don't feel like him. No, no, no. Yeah, well, every painting is different. It presents a whole different... It does, but it doesn't. Yeah. My theory of light, I can safely say, my theory of light was taught and handed down by the old masters up until the time of the Impressionists. I can spot it. I can prove it. I can prove that it was a theory that was thought. After the Impressionist movement, it disappeared. It disappeared to the point that I sit and look for people who know it. And there are a few people that know it. Other people don't. And I only share that theory with my classes. I don't share it on YouTube. And what that secret is. You have to go attend a workshop or come to a class to get that. But the theory of light is everything. And I think after the Impressionists, they went into modernism, rules didn't matter. And this whole big chunk, this secret key to, to painting, disappeared. And there are some artists that are resurrecting it, but it's not common. Very few people know this, but does it work? Oh yeah. It works, yes. Or you just remember to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like on a landscape, I feel like it's a little bit more abstract as far as, well, no. while you say capture the light when it's early day, later in the evening. But the theory doesn't matter what time of day it is. Okay. I sat with Matt Smith and he was going on about the theory of light and I said at the demo at the conference, I said, okay, close the doors. Matt Smith isn't here. And I'm going to teach you something else. And I'm going to say, here, try this. And the next day, somebody went outdoors, and I told this story. The next day, somebody did not go to the conference. She wanted to try what I was teaching. And she was out there, and I happened to have just walked out there. And she was just busy in her own little world. She didn't know I was there. And because I'm there as a conference as a teacher, I walked up to her and said, hey, do you need any help? And she looked up at me and recognized me, and she just burst into tears. And I said, what's going on? And she got up and she hugged me and she goes, I have been painting for eight years. I have been waiting for somebody. I have gone to workshops. I've been waiting for somebody to give me the key to make things, because all my paintings are muddy. They're not working. I don't know how to you know, work. 
She said, in one hour, you told me everything. She said, I applied. She said, look at my painting. She says, I was going to give up painting after this workshop. This was the last conference. This is it. And she said, you gave me my painting back. You know, that's how important that is. But it's so rarely taught. But you got to be ready for that conversation. Don today was ready for that conversation. You were ready last week. Some people don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And they've listened to it over and over and over again. And whew, yeah. Right over their head. So if you don't know it, trust me, you will at some point. And then you will go, wow. Didn't you go through a mind? It's like a whole new way. Now you can no longer go and look at paintings. I've ruined it for you now. <laughs> right? Levon, isn't it so though? It's like now you can't look at paintings without knowing what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Every gallery, every painting you go, that's what's wrong. That's mm -hmm. what's wrong. It's like you could see when people are not doing those rules, what, you know, thing that we do, people, you can just point it out. Yeah, is that clear? That's why you bought the painting last week. Oh, by the way, Don bought Levon's painting last week. Yeah, on the spot. Why? Because it was phenomenal. Yes, it was very good. It was phenomenal. When you get that effect of light in a painting, people want it. People want it because it's a human experience. They're like, boom, you, you connect it. And, and when you connect it... <laughs> So the theory of light is key, and knowing how light works and shadows work is key. So what were you thinking? Well, You're not so contrary today as you were last time. <laughs> I don't even know what was wrong. I think it was lack of sleep last time. Your blood sugar was down or sugar, something. Yeah, I don't know. Sugar high or something. Uh, okay, well, mm -hmm. I remember in the sixties, um, um, my sister and I used to make ties for men, and um, we had a label and everything, and we would sell them to friends, and my husband would take them to work, and her husband would, do, you know, we just sold a lot of them. But, but the, the style then was really bright ties. I mean, mm -hmm. really wide, wide, mm -hmm. wide, wide, wild, wild, wild and wide, wild and thick. thick. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they were big. They were fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was thinking about that. And then also we would match things up with uh, uh, shirts that were also mm -hmm. printed. So you had to coordinate these ties with, with the shirt that, that, that had a pattern as well. Mm -hmm. And that was tricky because you had to go with color. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they would blend and the guys would wear them. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't have the patience or the time. To get into the shirt. I was well, you kind of it. started with the stripes in I here. did stripes. I was going to yeah. do like a red and white stripe or whatever, yeah. and I thought, I can't do this, I can't do this. What was real interesting is before you came in here, we had a conversation, and we had a conversation about cufflinks. The cufflinks, yeah. And I threw that in, and also the the tie tack. The, 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 the tie tack, yeah. Tie yeah. <laughs> now, the thing is, what's really great about this painting is that, you know, right now, men don't dress very well. I mean, there's pretty much a, they, I mean, you look at Simon on America's Got Talent and he shows up in a dirty t-shirt. I mean, it's just, it's, it looks like he dug it out of the bottom of the hamper and it still has stains on it. And so like our level of, of dress is, is so low. Um, corporations that you work for, nobody wears suit and ties anymore. Everybody shows up as if they, yeah, it's like you, you know. So, so, so the the finally the finally dressed man is going away, along with the finally dressed woman, because although women still dress better than guys, in the '40s you did not go to San Francisco without a hat and gloves, and so painting hat and gloves back then would seem, well, everybody's got hat and gloves. I mean, how often do you see women with hat and gloves anymore? So that's a nostalgia thing. For you to sit there and go, you know, ties, cufflinks are out. Mm -hmm. I wear them because I think they're classy. In fact, I sometimes I wear them with these shirts and I have to like make a hole mm -hmm. so that I can stick them through there because I think they're cool. I love cufflinks. Um, and when you see somebody dressed up in cufflinks and a shirt and 
It's, they feel powerful. I mean, you go to the symphony and everybody looks like they just rolled out of bed. So I think, I think as far as getting the nostalgia thing is great. But you also set up a still life for us. We've got a center focal point. We have eye magnets. We have a distribution of shapes. How do you put those shapes in and make them work? Every, these cufflinks somewhere else probably wouldn't work. So artistically, you're looking at the design, trying to figure out how this is. So it has a, a painting that has meaning, that has nostalgia. It has uh, uh, a good composition, good effect of light, beautiful. I mean, even the way you kissed that light on that edge. You know, we, we're trying not to do a competition in this class because I don't want to have everybody feeling, oh, there's a, there's a bar here. If you get the idea, that's all I really care about. And so I'm not looking for masterpieces. I just want to look for masterful that you got the idea, that you understand what I'm trying to say. No. Bravo, this is great. It's great. You took a really boring subject and yeah. actually made it interesting. I mean, you would actually hang this up somewhere, you know? And I see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very fun. It's very playful and it's very poignant. Mm -hmm. It's like you nailed it. Mm -hmm. I'm still confused about landscapes or how to take that like, you know, I mean, you can see that I've, I've got it, but yet when I try to transfer that thinking or that, what do you call it, well, method, shoot. method. Yeah, but last week you just learned about something about light. That you, yeah. you know, so like that's how you learn these things. You learn these things and then when you're applying them in landscape, you, you'll see that it, it's all the same. It doesn't matter if you're painting landscape, portraits, it's all the same stuff. But the old masters, if you look at some of the old masters, the, they're dark paintings, but they have like a, a continuity of light, like maybe their, all their hats are white or they're... Sun. No, they're still like, if you look like the old... it's just spotted? Oh yeah, if you look like the Night Watch, everything is kind of swirled around until you get to those figures. If you look at Sargent's paintings, which are not dark, and you look at the eye magnets, at how he works the objects around, Madame X, you know, her stance and everything and how she's silhouetted and how the eye goes down the silhouette back to the arm and back up forming a nice beautiful triangle. It's, it's, it's all the same. It's all the same. It's just you, you, you'll eventually start seeing it. But like you, you have to discover this stuff on like lighting and shadows and composition and form and eye magnets. That's why it's so crucial because you can use this. Now I can have you go paint outdoors but that's even harder for people to well, do. That's that's a whole other thing, and I've got students yeah. that will not do that. So the only thing I can do is set up a landscape in your living room. 